Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax. And while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, hurry up. Come to the window. Quick, I'm come on. I'm tying my shoelace. Well, tie it afterwards. Tie it afterwards. Afterwards, you have me rushing down for breakfast. Precisely. Now, come on, come on, come on. My, 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 we're bossy this morning. Well, that's because we went to bed so early. Yeah, that makes sense. Sure. Now, all I see out of the window is Mr. Tucker scurrying down the road. Look at him like a stiff-legged rabbit. Mm-hmm. Isn't he quaint? One leg up, Wonder one leg down. Wonder if he's coming here. I wouldn't be surprised. Listen, do you have something you want to talk to him about? No, but Mr. Tucker always has something he wants to talk to somebody else about. What a funny old man. Look, now he stopped running. He's looking around the countryside like a periscope. You don't even know what a periscope is. I certainly do. It's those, those thingamajigs, yeah, one for each eye. Yeah, People use it at the races. Yeah, you're wrong again. Well, well, it's not one of those things to look at the moon with. Right, right. You get $64. That's a telescope. $64. Here you are. Besides, who cares, periscope? Mr. Tucker is looking around like a periscope, and I wonder what he's looking at. He is admiring our view. Oh, probably wishing he never sold us this house. Well, I don't blame him. I'd be sorry I sold this house, too. Now, with your permission, I would like to go and tie my shoe. Go right ahead. Thank you. Oh, darling, it's such a beautiful view from this bedroom window. Fields and fields and fields. Rising and falling like a souffle. Oops, there goes Mr. Tucker again. Is he coming over to us? I don't know. No, no, he's sort of gone down the road a piece. He's almost out of sight now. Sounds like a description of a football game. Say, David, who owns the land across the road? Mm, I haven't met him. He lives up beyond Bridgeport, I think. Now, can you imagine owning such a beautiful piece of land and living up beyond Bridgeport? Say, there's a beautiful spot over there on the left to build a house. He is crazy. Oh, it's crazy. The man who lives up beyond Bridgeport, you dope. Well, let the man live up beyond Bridgeport if he wants to. I'm perfectly satisfied. Such a waste, David. Now, wouldn't you rather have a view of the open fields and Mrs. So-and-so hanging out her wash? You know, you are so wonderful, David. Well, I think you so. You think of everything. <laughs> you should let me say that. Even Mrs. So-and-so's washing. Listen, David. What? Why don't we buy that land? With what? With... Goodwill and a mortgage. Well, we have one mortgage already. Well, then let's get another to match. Just a little one mm. to buy the land with. We'll have a brace of mortgages. Well, you don't buy land with little mortgages. Well, why not? You can buy a little house with a big mortgage. Mm. That's very funny. Now, listen, I mean it seriously, David. If we own this land, then as far as you could see, it would be not in land. Mm-hmm. And as far as you could see, it would be not in mortgages, too. <laughs> You just said you couldn't buy a piece of land with a little mortgage. Now, Claudia, don't act dumb. Me? Well, I'm not acting dumb. Well, I prefer to think that you're acting. Now, seriously, David, don't you like to look out this window and know that all those hills and acres and fields belong to you? Ooh, well, maybe someday. Say, I bet you that's Mr. Tucker. Mm, he can have breakfast with us. Told you he's walking as if he had something on his mind. You ready to come down, David? Yeah, I'm breathing down your neck, so don't break it running. Good morning, Mr. Tucker. Come on in. Well, ma'am, you knowed me before you seen me. Well, we recognized your ring. Come in, come in, come in. I don't usually ring, man, but seem as the sun's hardly raised, I minded my manners and I rang. Besides which, your door was locked. No, yeah, well, we're just about to have breakfast. Come on in, Mr. Tucker. Join us. I couldn't eat. Oh, of course you can. At least coffee. Mm-hmm. Have a cup See, of coffee. See, there's an extra cup. Bertha always places an extra cup. Fine woman, Bertha, but as I says, I couldn't eat. I'm so riled up, my stomach is turning, turning like a coffee grinder. I couldn't eat. Oh, Why? No, what happened? Down. Now, please sit down and tell us. You folks know I ain't the kind to come hustling to carry bad news. No, You're not. Uh... If there's anything I can't stand is folks who go stirring around spilling unhappiness. Well, there are always some of those folks, Mr. Tucker. That ain't the kind I am. No, no. So, I thunk twice before I come over here this morning... The bad news is for us? Yes. 
Yes, I walked clear by your house in order to give myself a chance, a chance to change my mind. Yes, we saw you. Then I says to myself, you young'uns be my neighbors, and you need my wisdom, my experience, and my advice. We certainly do, Mr. Tucker. So, I put my natural instincts in my pocket, and here it be. Well, you, uh, you have a shivering in our boots. Speak up, Mr. Tucker. Bad news, son. Bad news. Somebody dead? Worse than that. Oh, for a minute I was worried. Well, uh, does it have to do with us? Directly, most directly. Oh. It's about to land across the road. Oh. The, the, the land across the road? That's right. Yep. We were just talking about it. Yep. As a matter of fact, we noticed you looking over it. That started us talking. Well, what about it? It's such well. a lovely piece of land, Mr. Tucker. I'd like to get a mortgage uh, on Claudia. it. Claudia. That piece of meadow land is owned by a feller who lives up beyond Bridgeport a ways. Yeah, I know. And yesterday, the axe fell. Oh, was somebody hurt? Yesterday, I noticed there was men standing around looking over the land through them instruments with a plumb bob measuring it. Surveyors, huh? Surveyor men, that's what they were. Well, you know all about them, Mr. Norton. You're an architect. You know what they mean. Well, tell me, did the fellow who owns the land sell it or put it up for sale? It's worse than that. No. Oh. Well, everything is worse than everything else, but still, we, we don't know what anything is, Mr. Tucker. Son, did you hear the rumor a couple of months ago there was going to be a housing development up here in Eastbrook? Well, uh... Oh, see, you did. Well... When I seen them surveying men walking around yesterday, measuring and peering and poking and looking and drawing and shaking of their heads and nodding and whispering, I figured it was no rumor no more. Oh. What they're going to do with that piece of land across the road is a housing development. Good. Lots of people need houses. Have you lost your senses, ma'am? Well, I don't understand. Everybody knows lots of people need houses. And Day David knows especially. Sure they need houses, ma'am, but they don't need them right here. Plunk across the road from where you live, and right down the road from where I live, we're farmers. This here's farmland. It does mean our view, but, well, they they have to be someplace. Ma'am, I can see your brain ain't woke up yet this morning. You ain't thought of the ramifications of this here housing development. But I can see by the expression on Mr. Norton's face that he has. Yep. Yes, yes, I, I have. Yep. You mean the value of the land will go down? No, yeah, it'll go up. Well, I think that land with houses on it would have less value. I'm afraid it doesn't work that way. Well, then that's good. We'll be worth more. We'll be worth less. Well, David just said we... Land with houses on it ain't worth nothing to farmers, ma'am, and we be farmers. Oh, oh, yes. oh, oh, oh. Besides which, when we look out the window, we won't see those beautiful fields and hills anymore. All Still... them little houses like biscuits will be shooting up like asparagus in June. Hmm. But it ain't your view that's a tragedy. Houses, there's got to be. Yep. But it just seems to me there's plenty of land to build a house on. Not much land left in these here pots to graze a cow on. Cows is getting pushed out from every place. I'm telling you, my blood is cuddling at the thought of it. Well, cuddling. it seems to me it's just the opposite. Houses are needed, and needed badly. You can always buy milk in a bottle at the store. You ain't going to have milk to sell in bottles in a store if you ain't got land for a cow to graze on to make the milk, I'll tell you. Right, right you are. I'm telling you, son, if my ancestors were alive, they'd shoot to kill. Why, this here countryside was no more than a wilderness when they set foot and worked it into farming land. This is what comes of their having set foot, Mr. Tucker. We have your ancestors to thank for this. Are you blaming me for this here catastrophe? That he who deserves the blame place it there himself. Just what I always says, ma'am. Don't misunderstand me. I ain't again the wheels of progress turning. But I'm fighting for a way of life. Yes, and I understand. Very well, I understand. Of course, there's something that could be done about it. For instance? We could call a meeting of the town council and declare the property out of bounds. Could we really do that? It's a free country, ain't it? Mm, it's a free country. It's... Free to be built up any way anybody wants to. No. Nope. Do you think your ancestors would have liked it if they'd have set their foot in this here jungle and somebody else told them that they couldn't build a house? Yeah, I understand how David feels, too. He feels that if there's to be a housing development, it's important. Maybe it shouldn't be stopped. Way of life or no way of life. Well, it's right, noble way to feel, but don't do a cow no good. And to a farmer, a cow comes first. Well, I ain't got no more time to set clavering with you young'uns. Hey, listen, where are you going? You haven't finished your coffee. I got to get myself over to Matthew Warren's. I ain't one for carrying bad news around, no, but no. some things got to be told. Uh, set where you are, I'll find my way out. I ain't a man who has to be coddled. Uh, call me Mr. Norton if you've got some solution right. to this here problem. All right, Mr. Tucker, I will. If this sort of thing keeps going, I'll have to get out my covered wagon and head me out west. 
So long. So long. You look kind of gloomy, David. Yeah, I, I feel kind of gloomy. That's because you feel in the middle with yourself, don't you? I hate to see that property broken up. On the other hand, as you say, people have to live someplace. Oh, it's true, but it's hard to see a whole way of life break down. Mm. Mr. Tucker's not fighting because his view is going to be spoiled, but because a pattern for living is going to be spoiled. The survival of the small farmer in New England, that, that that's at stake. Poor Mr. Tucker. Well, you can't blame him. I don't want to answer it. I'm not in the mood to be polite to anybody. Maybe it's Mama. Wait till I tell her she'll be heartbroken. We'll force her to buy one of the houses. No, 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 nothing doing. If I'm going to allow those houses to be built, I'm going to give them to someone who really needs them. <laughs> Listen to who's playing God. Hello? Yes, this is Mrs. Norton. Who's this? The Eastbrook Electric Company. What? What? Yes, certainly we use an electric stove and an electric refrigerator and an oil burner run by electricity. Oh, yes, I... Oh, I have a little hand hair dryer, too, I forgot. That's electric. Really? What's going on here? Shh, hush up. Well, we have a lot of other electric things around, too, a mixer and... Oh, you're not interested, I see. Well, would you mind telling me why you want to know all this? Here, I'll talk to you. Go away, go away, go away. The, 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 what, the load? Well, what load? Oh, I see. Well, thank you very much for calling. Goodbye. Oh, any time you want to call me about our electric things, why, just call me. Yes, you'd be just the one they want to talk to. What was it? It's funny. I wish I knew. The electric company wants to know what load they have to carry. Is they're going to strengthen up electric wires or something. Where are they going to strengthen them up? What has that got to do with us? I don't know. Across the road, they said. Across the road? Where the housing development is. They sent men out surveying yesterday. <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> David, what's so funny? Listen, isn't it bad enough we're going to have a housing development? Do we have to have an electric load, too? Darling, the electric company is Mr. Tucker's housing development. What do you mean? Explain me. It means his surveyors were the electric companies and the housing development, his imagination, and his fears. I bet you a million dollars. I bet you a million dollars you're right. David, listen, we ought to call him. We ought to call him right away. He's so dismal. Yeah, I'll call him. Do you realize that now we can still be farmers? Still, darling. We are only just beginning. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. When there's nobody home but you at noon, do you take time for a restful lunch? It's a good idea to sit down, open a bottle of ice-cold Coca-Cola, and lunch refreshed. Coke is a natural companion of good things to eat, and you'll find it makes sketchy leftovers taste a lot better. Every day, Monday through Friday... Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. Mm -hmm.